Maria, welcome back to my channel. You've probably seen my other videos featuring the Rose Cafe Bustier dress pan. But today I want to share a song tutorial of a hack for creating this beautiful, airy feminine dress. I'll show how to modify a pattern to make a midi flare skirt with a slit, adjustable straps and a bustier bodice using a lightweight fabric. The cups here consist of only two layers of lightweight fabric supported by a narrow strap. If your breasts are on a heavier side or require more support, I recommend making foam cups instead. You can find instructions on how to create them in this video. I had an intent to recreate the dress, but it's giving those awesome reformation dresses. So if you're into that style, keep watching! First of all, I need a Rose Café Bustier dress pattern for the tutorial. I love that there's barely anything to assemble, just cut a piece right from the sheet. I'm using a lightweight viscose fabric for the dress. The same fabric goes for the bodice lining as well. This floral pattern gives a summer mood and makes the dress simple, which I like. If you were to use plain fabric, you could get an evening gown. Imagine this dress in black. It would give a total femme fatale. Let's move on to modifying the skirt pattern. We have the front and the back pieces ready and I'm drawing a line from the dart, extending it further. I'm doing it both on the front and back. Next, I'll cut along this line and remove the dart. The main principle here is to merge the dart lines and spread the skirt flare as a result. The back piece follows the same principle. Now I'll measure how much the front piece spreads over this length, which turns out to be 11 cm. Even if the back section has a different measurement, we'll apply the same 11 cm for both pieces further. The remaining modifications will be done directly on the fabric while cutting. This is optional, but for the front body piece I'm getting rid of the seams, so I just trim one seam allowance and assemble the pieces into a whole front piece. Let's cut the fabric pieces, but remember to pre-wash and pre-press the fabric beforehand. To make things simpler, I prefer to cut the bodice from a single interfaced piece. First, I'm measuring the required amount for the bodice and then tear a strip of fabric accordingly. I'm making a second strip for the bodice lining, both in one go. I'm pressing and interfacing one piece using tailoring interfacing. From this prepared piece, I'm cutting the main bodice pieces and all the cup pieces, both the main fabric and the lining. Don't forget to iron on a strip of non-stretch interfacing on the top edge for the main pieces, including the cup, to prevent them from stretching. From the non-interfaced piece, I'm cutting the bodice lining pieces. Let's move on to the skirt. So we have four pattern pieces, which we should cut following the spreading principle, plus the any length. So here I have the fabric folded in half lengthwise. The center front piece goes next to the fold. Also, I'm leaving 35 cm from the bottom to lengthen the piece. Our flare spread measurement was 11 cm, so we have to add 5.5 cm to each piece to have this flare. So I mark 5.5 cm to the side from the bottom of the center piece. Plus, we have to make seam here, so I add 1 cm seam allowance to the top of the piece. Connect these two markings. This line will end up running parallel to the previous dot line. Continue this line further, measuring a total of 35 cm from the bottom. But actually, I would suggest lengthening to 30 or 25 cm only. The same process applies to the side front piece. As I have such a fabric pattern, I can place the pieces in the opposite direction. I'm keeping the grain line as it originally was. I'm adding 5.5 cm to the bottom and 1 cm to the top of the piece and extending this line for 35 cm downwards. I'm adding the length along the entire bottom edge. For the side edge, I don't need to make any changes to the pattern. I simply extend the existing line that's already flared. If you are enjoying the video, please give the video a like. Your support means a lot to me. Also, feel free to drop a comment below. I appreciate your engagement, I look forward to hearing from you. I'm 
cutting the pieces and here is the front skirt. I suggest trimming off 1 cm of the length next to the seam. The same principle applies to both back pieces as well, however, for the center back piece, there's no need to add anything to the center, there will be just a seam along the green line. So here are all the pieces cut, for the main bodice, for the lining and the skirt. We are starting with assembling the bodice and pressing the seams close toward the back. In the same manner, assemble the lining bodice. Here are the pieces. Next, assemble the cups, both for the main bodice and the lining. I am pressing the seams open here. I suggest trimming the seam allowances on the lower cup that goes to the upper cup like this. Matching the notch with the seam, I am adding the upper piece and pressing the cup over around pressing hem. I am making all four cups in the same way. Let's switch to the skirt. Since we have a slit on the left side, we have to prepare the pieces for it. I'll share my favorite method of creating knit slits. For the center piece and the left side piece, make a mark 32 cm from the top edge. This will be a starting point of the slit. Strengthen this area by adding a small square of interfacing. Then fold over this entire edge by 5 or 6 mm. Many same fold to the corresponding part of the second piece where the slit will be. Now right sides together align these pieces ignoring the folds we just made. Stitch approximately 5 or 6 mm from the edges until you reach the slit marking. Make a few back stitches here. Now press open the sewn section. This is how it should look like. Now stitch along the seam from the wrong side, making sure you catch the folds. When you have reached the slit start, just continue stitching by folding and finishing the edges. Do the same on the second side. Press the slit. Here is how neat a sleeve we have. Make some back stitches here to reinforce the opening. Continue assembling the skirt. I'm just finishing the seam allowances with an overlocker and pressing them towards the center. For the back center piece, first finish the center edge with an overlocker. I'm stitching the back center pieces together to a certain marking where the zipper will start, just measuring the zipper's length with one hand and pressing the stitch section open. Assemble the skirt fully. I'm finishing the hem the same way we just done with the slit edges. Folding and pressing 5 mm, then folding one more time and stitching next to the fold. Here is the neat hem and the slit edge. Now I am attaching the bodice to the skirt right sides together. And pressing the seam towards the bodice. Now it's time to attach the zipper. You can follow the detailed instruction on how I attach zippers in this video. Or feel free to use your preferred method for attaching zippers. The base is done, now let's switch to the straps. For adjustable straps, you need such supplies, sliders and rings. Begin by measuring the width of your slider. This measurement will help to determine the width of the strap you need to cut. If my slider width is 7 mm, I cut the strip 4 times wider, which is 28 mm. Next, I press 7 mm of the strip's edge inwards. You can mark a line that divides the strips in half lengthwise and press the edge to that line. After that, I fold the prepared strip in half and stitch it close to the edges. This is how I got my straps done. 
cut a piece of the back strap that's 5 to 8 cm long. Thread it for the ring and then fold in half. Set aside. For the front strap, insert it through the slider, leaving a loop and a tail. Slide the tail through the ring, positioning it to come out from beneath the slider. Thread the tail through the slider as well. The distance between the ring and the slider should be about 10 cm. Stitch the back strap together. To secure the tail in place, use dense zigzag stitches on the strap where I have placed the pin. I don't want to take my domestic sewing machine for the zigzag right now, so it will be enough to make some straight back stitches. Cut the tail just next to the stitches. Press the straps very lightly. And here are very neat, adorable straps. the straps next to the back seams, right sides together, and attach the lining to the main dress. Stitch the lining down to the top edge all over the bodies right sides together, excluding the curved underbust edge. Ease the lining a little bit and match all the seams on the back. Turn the dress to the right side and understitch the seam along the lining. Step that will help to finish the lining's bottom. Fold and press 1 cm from the bottom of the lining. I could do it before that as well. Press the top so that the lining isn't visible from the outside. Pin and make stitch lines along the curved underbust edge 5 mm away from the edges, attaching the lining to the bodice at these sections. To attach the lining to the zipper, first open the zipper. Then turn the zipper area inside out and flip the lining over from the top. Use a zipper foot and sew down the lining along the zipper teeth. The zipper slider should be at the same level with the edges, creating one line. Cover the waist seam with the lining and pin it down the seam all over the bodice. Now stitch from the right side exactly in the waist seam, very carefully. You can baste it in place as well if you are not secure with the pins. If everything is done right, this is what you have to achieve. A clean covered wrong side of the bodice. Finally, let's finish the cups. Sew the main cup and the lining cup right side together along the top edges. The main is that with a strip of interfacing on the top. Understitch the seam along the lining to secure it in place. Fold the lining cups towards the wrong side of the main cups and press the top section of the cups. Pin the lining down so that's perfectly aligned with the main cup. You will notice that the lining is slightly bigger than the main cup at the bottom. To fix this, carefully cut off 2 or 3 mm excess fabric from the bottom of the lining, mostly from the center section of the cup. Stitch 5 mm along the bottom edge of the cup to attach the lining completely. Stitch the cup seam and the seam on the front using a pin and attach the cup to the curved underbust section of the bodice. Make sure the top edges of the bodice and the cup are perfectly aligned. I'm stitching from the bodice side. Clip the curved underbust seam allowance only. 
Be careful not to cut for the stitch line. This is the way the seam will be flat and nice. This is an underwire channeling. Stitch it to the curved seam allowances, covering the cap attaching seam. Stitch close to the channeling edge, leaving ends. Usually there's a stitch on a channeling, so stitch exactly in this stitch. Trim the cap seam allowance a little bit, so that it isn't visible from under the underwire channeling. Press the seam allowance towards the bodies. When I haven't top stitched the cups yet, it's time to make a fitting. The underwires haven't been inserted yet, so we can see a little gaping here. Not a bad option. However, once the underwires are in place, the center will sit closely to the body. Using chalk, I mark the ideal strap length in this fitting. Top stitch the underbust curve from the right side along the bottom edge of the underwire channeling. It's approximately 7 mm from the seam. Here we are. I am pressing the seam and the cups one more time. Here are the underwires. Refer to the underwire chart to determine the appropriate size for your bodies. Insert the underwires. Make tiny zigzag stitches on the ends of the channeling. In my case, a few tightly spaced straight back stitches will suffice. Before stitching, fold the end as shown to ensure the metal underwire ends not here. Trim the ends as closely as possible to the stitches. For attaching the straps, find the chalk marking you determined during the fitting. In the case of a cup C, I'm positioning the strap 5 cm from the side. Stitch the strap along the cup stub edge. However, don't trust to trim the straps. I suggest doing the following. Align the strap with the entire cup and mark the point where the underwire channeling and the straps intersect. Trim 1 cm beyond that marking. Then fold the end of the strap and sew it on the underwire channeling. This step helps a bit in minimizing stretching of the cup. Ensure that you press everything neatly and prepare to wear your new romantic rose cafe bestie dress. Remember to take a photo of your stunning creation and share it on Instagram. Thank you very much for tuning in, I hope you are waiting for more tutorials from me.